Hi, this is Sheila with Stampin' Wishes, and welcome to my studio today. All right, so I'm not. I'm going to do something a little different. I usually show what I'm making, but I'm not. Uh, I'm going to kind of surprise you with what it becomes. It was a bay window fun fold card that I happened to see on Rachel Tessman's uh, uh, channel or blog, and uh, she had gotten it from Marie Taylor. And uh, so anyway, I thought I'd give my try at it. I just thought it was so cute. So we're going to be using the Itty Bitty Christmas, and from that we're going to be using Thinking of You at Christmas and the Blessed Christmas Wishes. And then on um, this particular set, I'm using um, the snowflakes. And when you cut these out, and I cut it with the Glimmer Silver paper, it will cut you out two individual uh, snowflakes. So we're using the smaller one and one of my ones that I'll show you later I had used one of the larger ones. So we'll see with the small one. This is what it looks like. I went ahead and pre-cut it so it'd be ready and I wouldn't have to bring all that in. So let's go ahead and cut our um, card up and everything that we need. We're using the Feel Like Frost paper and I'll show you uh, another one that I did uh, yesterday or this uh, yesterday evening that was made with the perfectly plaid and it was just gorgeous. So we're going to use our thick cardstock and all of your uh, products and uh, dimensions, measurements, scoring, everything's going to be on the um, video when it pops up and I'll also have it over at my uh, blog listed there as well. So uh, please feel free to go there and if you're needing any of the supplies I'd love to have you purchase them through my store. All right, so we're going to take our eight and a half by eleven uh, thick whisper white, and we're going to cut it at four and a quarter up and down. And um, we'll set aside the other one for another card because we only need the one. Next, we'll move our blade out of the way because we're going to do our scoring, and we want to do our first scoring at three eighths. So there's our three eighths right there. So we've lined that up, and we're going to score that. Then our next score is going to be at one and seven eighths. So we're going to lay that down and we're going to score it. Our next uh, cut, our score, not cut, is going to be at three and five eighths. And remember whenever you're doing your three eighths or five eighths and you're using a sixteenth measurement, that the easiest way to, because two of the most popular um, score lines is uh, your three eighths and then your five eighths. So if you'll remember that before your half inch mark, that two little notches before then is going to be your, which are sixteenths, but that's going to be your three eighths. And then if you remember before your three quarters, the two notches behind it, or your three sixteen or two sixteenths, is going to be your five eighths. So that that kind of gives you an easy way, so you're not having to sit there and count each time. So we're going to go to three and five eighths, and we're going to place our score. Our last score is going to be at five and a half inches. All right. So we're going to set that aside for a minute. Now we're going to take our um, DSP. This is six by six, and our measurement on this is going to be four and one eighth by six inches. And since we want this, uh, because you saw the panels we put in it, we're going to want some panels to go in there. I'm going to take off the less um, designed portion of this paper. So I'm going to measure this up at four and one eighth and we will cut that off. All right, set that aside for another project. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to line it up. One of the most important things that you uh, need to remember from this is that as I cut and I lay it, I'm stacking them on top of each other, so the last one that goes on top will be my first one that I actually lay out and go all the way through them. And it's important for you to keep your scenery, especially if you're using a scenery like this, um, put together, okay? So we're going to cut at one and five eighths. So let's bring it over here to our one and come up here to our five eighths. And let's cut it. Our next cut's going to be at one and three eighths. So let's go ahead and bring it to our one and three eighths right here. And then our last cut's going to be at one and five eighths. So let's bring it back over here. And then what that will leave you is a one and three eighths 
measurement okay so now I've got them all stacked up and ready to go for when we go to place them okay so I'm going to put them over here and keep them in that stack now for your um, other color which we're using United of Navy today we need it to be at four and one eighths by three and three quarters so uh, let's go ahead and come in here and come at four and one eight and this is a scrap that I'm using okay and then we're going to come over and do it at three and three quarters Now on your short side, which this is your short side, your three and three quarters, we want to trim off two one quarter inch pieces. So I'm going to move this over here to our one quarter inch piece and we're going to cut it and we will set it over here with the rest of our items and we'll cut one more. Okay. All right. And if you haven't gotten this um, cutter yet, Oh my gosh, you've got to get this trimmer. It is the most fantastic trimmer we've ever had at Stampin' Up! And I'm enjoying it so much. I've uh, been using it for well over a month now. The blades are extremely sharp. Your measurements are spot on. I mean, there's just... I have no issues with it. I like the way it automatically kind of locks on you here. But it's easy enough to un undo. As long as I find it easier to come from the end and unlock it than I do here. It gives, you know, it's a little bit harder to pull from there and I think it's a little safer on your edges anyway and that I think that's why they've got that little loop there. So let's set this aside. We've gotten all of our cutting and scoring done. Now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get our stamping together and that way we can put this all together at one time. I'm bringing my Knight of Navy out. Let's open it up and slide it in. And because I'm using the Timeless label punch I want to give myself enough space over here and again this is just a scrap of whisper white that I had in my uh, scrap pile and I'm just going to come in here if you're not completely straight that's not, I'm not why I'm not worried really about doing the uh, stamparitis because of the fact that um, if I need to maneuver my punch I can straighten out if I get a little crooked okay so let's go ahead and do that and put this to the side for a second while we punch. I've got my windows open today. It's a gorgeous day. I think it's in the 50s or 60s and I don't want any of my stamp pads drying out on me with the air coming in like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and center this the best I can. I think this one looks good. Right there. Okay, we're going to punch that out and we'll set it to the side. Now the other uh, strip that I'm going to have in front, I found it uh, just as easy to come in here and cut me an actual little strip. And I did have some earlier that I got from my, because I keep everything on my in my scrap pile except for things I know for sure I wouldn't use. So we're going to come over and cut a strip that is a half an inch and we'll stamp on this and make this our uh, front greeting. Okay. So let's put this aside now and come back in and stamp that greeting. Let's come over here and bring our stamp pad back out. And this one is the one where we're doing the um, blessed Christmas wishes. Now I'm going, because I'm going to have this little bit of a snowflake here, I've got to remember to leave just a little bit on that side and then I'm going to flag the other end of it. So what I'm going to try and do, and I may need to bring this a little closer, is I am lining it up on my grid paper, by the way, in this cute grid paper. And if you don't take paper pumpkin, that's something you might want to think about. They have the cutest projects each month. And so if um, you're a beginner stamper, that is one of the best ways to get started. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, and that way you can uh, get your projects in and you can do several projects and uh, get to know your stamps and how they work. And uh, you get the little spots, which is the smaller versions of our stamp pads. And so you can uh, have a collection of those going on as well. And those work well when you're using your stamparatus if you want just a small area being stamped. Uh, it helps prevent it from getting on the other uh, portion of your um, guide that comes over but there again even if you were to go over it's not a um, big deal at all on that okay so as far as getting your ink on it is what I'm I guess I'm trying to 
spit out there. <laughs> so, okay, so let's go ahead and flag this end of it, and I'm going to come into the center and then come to, from each edge. Alright, and then I'm going to trim a little bit off of here because I didn't need, if we fit this up here, I'm going to bring the little frosted uh, extensions there right around the B. So I'm going to take and by having it there, I'm putting me a little snip there so I know to cut off this little piece that we won't need. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut that off. Alright, so uh, what I'm going to do with this right now is go ahead and use one of my um, small or the mini dimensionals because it's a good way for it to pop up our little snowflake and the little bit of overage that I will have on it will be ideal for um, adding our uh, clear frosted epoxy, clear and frosted epoxy. So let's bring in my tool here and let's take this off. I had to take it off actually before I did that, but that's okay. Let's get that out of the way. And we're going to just set that down about here. Alright, then I'm going to bring in my snowflake. And we're going to put it about right there. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. And then I'm going to take one of our larger clear epoxy jewels and set it right on top. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, we're going to set that aside. We'll apply it to our card after a while. Alright, so now we're ready to actually just start assembling everything. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to bring on and again keep keep those carefully in order so that you don't mess up what you're doing. And uh, we want to burnish our uh, score lines. Remember that the score line makes a valley. Always push away from the valley whenever you're burnishing. We'll do it this way first, and then I'll come back with my bone folder and give it a good crisp. If I've got my bone, there it is. Okay, so we'll do a big, nice, crisp burnish there. That way everything works real nicely. And the purpose of doing it, and I'm bringing this one because it's going to um, make a difference how it works both ways when we start putting this card together. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay our card out in front. The first thing we're going to do is bring in our um, little strip here. And I'm going to apply some of the liquid adhesive to it, just very sparingly. And we'll put that, line that one on up in there. Right, let's get it started. There we go. I always, I don't put hardly any pressure at all on my uh, glue. A lot of people uh, have think that they have to really push on it, and you don't. If you just turn it upside down like I, I keep it here, and then you just put enough pressure of holding it there, um, that ink, I mean that um, glue comes right out for you. So um, no no reason to get it too gobby in though because if you do you're going to wet your paper and it's going to um, not be very pretty. It'll kind of warp up on you because it will be wet. So I just bring my thin little line there, grab it, and then we're going to place the other one right here on this little 3 8 inch flat. Okay, make sure they're down well. Give that a couple of seconds. Okay, now I've still got these all in the order that I had them. This is our first panel here, which is 1 and 3 8 inch. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And I may speed this up a little bit. Um, you'll just put the panels on the way they come, and that'll save us a little bit of time. Okay. Okay, as you can see, getting the three panels on front, isn't that gorgeous how they just come across in the scenery? Had I gotten those out of order, it wouldn't be nearly as attractive. So keep that in mind if you're doing any kind of patterns, um, which most of your stuff, whether it's the plaids or the uh, scenic type things, anything that is not just in all different directions, you want to make sure that you kind of keep it in the order that the uh, paper was designed to go. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and flip this over 
and on the inside we have our one and five eighths inch left which is going to go there and then our blue that we had trimmed off two quarter inch strips from is going to go right here. Now if it's your uh, desire you can add and, and I'll show you in one of my other cards you can add a little white panel here or you could use your uh, white chalk marker or you could use your um, gel pen if you still have one of those from when we uh, sold them with Stampin' Up. I still keep those around so uh, I can use them. And so in this case I'm going to make it a little different and not place a panel there so you can kind of see what it looks like. And then I'll show you one that does have a panel so you'll have an option to do it either way. So we want to leave a little bit of a border there and push it up just a tad. There we go, that looks perfect. Alright, so now on our thinking of you at Christmas, we're going to get a couple of our larger dimensions and put those up. I like to put three of them to give it a nice solid support because this becomes like a little uh, mechanism for propping your card up, which you'll see in a second as it becomes what is being called a bay window fun fold because it does look like a fun <laughs> Uh, bay window when we get done with it. Now the originator that we think of this card, um, she didn't really have a name for it and um, so when Rachel uh, did it she went ahead because it reminded her so much of a, a bay window she went ahead and called it a bay window and I think it's the most fitting uh, names for it so I'm calling it a um, bay window fun fold. All right. So what we're going to do uh, again, watching your fold line on or your score line on the left side, we want to make sure that we leave some gap there, and we leave a little bit of a white strip there as well. Now, if we wanted to, I could have put this down first, and probably you know hindsight of it, brought this over and left uh, equal strips around there. But I think either way, it's gorgeous. So why don't we bring in some of our clear um, epoxy? and uh, dots and let's put them over right here I think it's a beautiful place to just finalize the accent of it and you could use rhinestones anything that you want to but this kind of the, this type kind of reminds you of um, snow or melting ice you know so that's why I thought it was appropriate for it. Now we're ready to bring in our little tag here. Now to show you the magic of this card and why it's called a bay fold card is we're going to stick right here on the edge this card and if you notice it forms into a bay window. Isn't that gorgeous? Is beautiful. Alright so my decision here is where do I want to place this? I really don't want to place it where my um, beautiful scenery is and stuff like that and so if somebody all right sorry for that interruption evidently my filming cut off right at the end of this when I was um, more or less talking about this and where I was going to place uh, my blessed Christmas wishes so I decided to put it up there as a snowflake like it was falling down into the snow and the trees and the ground and so when you get ready to mail this you just close it up and um, they lay flat for mailing great size you know for your normal A2 uh, envelopes and the like so let's go ahead and show you what all I did this one I made um, again here's the inside I had talked about earlier that we could use a uh, overlay of white on and frame it with whatever color you want to so I chose to do our rectangular uh, dies and I cut one in the gold foil and then I brought a whisper white in for it as well. So this one would uh, also come back in here and just clip into here and I always like to push them a little bit it, it kind of uh, brings them back into shape and I'm going to bring this up a little bit if, so you can see what I did here. I did put Merry Christmas on the tree and I used our perfectly plaid set for that embossed it in gold then I used some of the same gold Delica and I brought around the edge of this and uh, brushed it on with a uh, sponge dauber and then this came from our stars that's um, I don't have the set handy with me uh, but anyway it, it's oh, do I, 
no I don't okay but anyway it's our star set that has all of those different stars I cut up a lot of those and uh, save them when I'm I'm doing other projects and so I just grabbed that out of there and then I used our um, beautiful Christmas rhinestones and accented it in a few areas so I thought this one came out just gorgeous so this is the first one I did using the filling uh, like frost designer paper and um, I placed this particular greeting when you look at the difference in them a little bit further down I use a larger um, snowflake out of the two you know that you cut out and uh, I did it between the sceneries because I didn't want to get, mess up my scenery and when you kind of look at this you see the rest of the leaf coming or the branch coming out here I thought was real cute and then the inside looks like the other ones so um, again here's our different projects that I have done with this one. It's a fast, quick, simple card. I hope you'll try it. But until next time, happy creating and God bless.